welcome to the first Focal Point School live stream recorded for our official Discord channel Ariel this month. My name is Wojtek Krulik and I would like to introduce you to the special 1 hour plus live session made by Darek Zabrowski, our CEO and co-founder of Focal Point School. This session was done in light of our last Witcher team contest and to show our participants and potential students how to tackle concept art assignments in the most efficient way. Tune in and have fun! Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our Discord server for more activities. Enjoy! When we looked into your um, contest pieces, why uh, the first uh, the first question would be like, why did we pick up uh, Witcher, right? Like, of course, like, uh, um, for instance, I'm not a like hardcore game player, but uh, I love uh, Witcher universe. I love, uh, um, you know, how um, latest um, um, basically productions have been made uh, in terms of like the quality uh, of the games and I even liked a little bit, uh, maybe not even a little bit, I quite liked the first season of uh, for the Net uh, Netflix series. I didn't watch uh, the second one fully. So uh, we are in that mode like once in a while at Focal Point that we basically pick up the game that basically just uh, estimate our team for the whole term. It might be sometimes a fantasy genre, sometimes it can be sci-fi, it can be oriented re regarding the, the franchise that's like a movie, that's like a game, that's just a book or novel. Uh, we are basically having a really interesting task that, that basically is um, very, uh, very common in our industry, which basically is becoming like for instance, taking uh, taking over uh, 3D modelers, uh, level designs, or like a very low poly uh, map designs, and make it like a, how it would look like in a next gen uh, title, or basically improve that upon and elevate that to next gen look uh, for the concept art. And we also um, uh, thought that it would be maybe really good to to do a little bit of like remaster. So uh, we really wanted to uh, take one of our favorite games and, and basically the old ones, of course, that are not that beautiful anymore. They are not that, um, you know, flashy and like really, uh, really detailed, really ne next gen and make them a new refinement look. So basically that's how we brought this uh, idea for the contest because uh, it was one of our uh, tasks for uh, during the last term, during the previous term as well. And we had a lot of fun uh, with Mikkel doing those tasks. So uh, we also saw that the students really like that. So it's pretty awesome um, when we basically give you the task that you guys are learning and at the same time you are excited, right? This is why we are learning all the time. It's not because uh, we want to do like a boring stuff, boring studies. We just want to really sit down and do exciting things. That, that makes us excited and, and make, uh, makes us hyped about, um, about like the whole concept art movement, basically. So uh, I, I brought some of uh, the screens up from online that I could just find on Google or Bing. And, and basically these are some of the scenes. Um, some are a little bit more like landscape-ish. Some are like more like, a, there is like some architectural elements. There's like interior. We have like some really nice, like um, like a forest with how, and, and you can see, for instance, how they try to uh, achieve those like, um, you know, VFX effects uh, like back then. In, I think it was 2007, I guess, that the first game uh, came out or 2006. Uh, but yeah, you can see that a lot of things improved upon that. And even Witcher 3, which is already a game that has like a couple years, uh, it still looks uh, quite good. And the world building there is, is, is definitely awesome. Um, I think that the base uh, story that um, you know that the production is built upon is, is just incredible, and has a very uh, and has a very rich value in terms of like world building, you know. And this basically uh, this task also basically uh, lets you get a little bit of into the shoes of concept artists that basically brings things uh, bring things uh, to the next level and really uh, make the world richer, right? Because you can see that some of the locations already are quite empty and it's not about the textures only it's not about like the the quality of colors it's also about the props it's it's about the placement it's about like um you know how many polygons they, they could use and of course most importantly it's all about like how the whole scene feels and i guess like um 
uh, a lot of scenes uh, look very washed out these days and like don't they don't feel uh, basically as much in depth and we don't really see uh, you know much um, you know of like a physical based like lighting or like a realistic uh, somehow um, lighting conditions so for instance like and um, if I just open some of those that I just grabbed today uh, I think it's it's good to just basically quick like a quick I uh, do like a quick uh, you know revisions uh, on the on some of the shots. I actually plan to do just one, uh, but just to give you a quick head up, how can you basically improve the scene? Just changing the lighting scenario and and, and basically playing according to to having that knowledge, basic knowledge about how the lighting reacts and how you can basically by uh, just levels uh, options you can bring things uh, to the to the next level basically. So uh, I would just quickly maybe take this and, and then I will just jump on like a bigger scene uh, that requires a little bit more coloring uh, because I think this scene, uh, even though it, it it's of course kind of um, kind of old and, and feels dated, uh, I guess it's just, it still has the, the, the right vibe, you know, it, it has, still has a beautiful architecture, has like some really interesting you know, solutions when it comes to like arching the, the whole scene and, and building like even the, those like uh, reflections, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, so basically what we can do is uh, is just do a quick play of, of just with the lighting on the values, right? And, and basically if you just check the values right now, uh, you can see that everything is kind of washed out. You know, we see that there is like some lighting casted through the windows probably from those windows that are off the canvas of the canvas also those and they basically bring a lot of lighting to the scene but it somehow uh, lacks of depth so I think the first thing that we might do is basically correcting the values I think that was also one of the problems that um, we noticed uh, when you guys were doing your uh, contest stuff so you were maybe a little bit afraid of how many things you have ch you have to change or actually how to improve certain things, right? So sometimes it's about just um, finding like um, the right balance between remastering what's good and leaving what's what's basically uh, remastering what's bad, sorry, and leaving what actually is good and what's working, right? So I think this is very important aspect at, that you might have to take into consideration. And for instance, if you if you remaster a scene like that, and I really can tell that like um, you know the architecture and and the yeah, the, the composition is, is awesome, like the, the play of materials and the patterns is there. It just me, it just lacks of that, like, a, you know, realistic lighting conditions that, you know, these days ne or next gen uh, titles really have. So, uh, as you can see, you can just improve those things very quickly by just playing with levels. Of course, of course, like on top of that, I would probably just change like a, the whole like color balance to find a little bit better like uh, formations in the shadow uh, because I think everything just got a little bit too dreamy, too, too reddish, I would say. So even to some degree, like bringing some things, uh, you know, uh, or desaturating some areas would be pretty, I think, pretty good to give it a little bit more realistic look, right? On top of that, as you can see, I'm already just kind of flattening out uh, the canvas. Uh, because I'm working on top of the layers, but just basically making sure that you are able to flesh out like a material definition that receive the lighting in, in this room is also very important, right? Because the way how, how you shade the objects, it immediately creates like a good, uh, good vibe, you know, good feeling that, yeah, the object is just realistic, right? Look, I don't even think about that, oh, I need to like find a good photo reference for it. I just need to photo by something no i just try to bring like a basic you know lighting scenario of like having you know the reflection that's basically exposed to the directional light which is coming from the from the um, from the window we have a little bit of bounce light from the side of of this um of this uh, element of this pillar and we have also ambient light that basically uh, receives the lighting from um it might be from the sun, even from the sky. It might be from the, you know, the, the overall um, room. Uh, and it's not actually exposed to the direction light, which in this case actually is, uh, is the sun, right? So basically having that basic knowledge on lighting, you can improve upon 
um, you know, objects tremendously and make them look like, a, yeah, next gen already, you know, like very, very quickly, very simply. Um, I can just paint over those areas. It's gonna be rough, but just to give you a little bit of idea uh, that you, you just don't think about, oh, I need to change this person, like this, you know, like this texture, or I need to like uh, make super duper new, uh, you know, pattern. It doesn't really matter as long as, uh, as you don't have the right, uh, you know, lighting scenario and the objects don't receive the proper lighting treatment. And this is a good example uh, when it comes to older games. I think you can look up, uh, for instance, GTA, GTA 5, I guess, or even GTA 4, when the modders are still able to uh, to remaster the, the titles with just the simple modes. But since the game from the beginning had like a proper lighting information that the colors were realistic, um, it wasn't really super duper in terms of like VFX effects. It was more about creating like a realistic vibe and, and having the natural, natural uh, look for the whole production, right? So I think that's um, that's where the things are really, uh, yeah, speaking for um, for the good of production when you basically have uh, you know those elements um, in place. So uh, of course, nice set of like uh, dressing, nice de details for the patterns, some extra interior design uh, solutions are very much uh, rewarding. But as long as the the title or or the or the game looks um, proper in terms of lighting scenario composition uh, values um, colors uh, those extra bits of of design solutions uh, elevated the, the title even higher in terms of like a you know next level look but now I'm just changing the lighting I'm just basically knowing uh, from the you know experience of working on many pictures or like just looking at many things uh, daily I basically can guess like where how the lighting will react on those like archways or you know like how it basically will uh, condense in terms of like um, the lighting scenario here and you can see that the depth become like much more apparent right like I I first basically made everything a little bit darker but now i can bring back some of the ambience to to keep uh, the things um, looking realistic right to really make um, the right forms right the right um the right value volume basically if you look right now you can see how flat it was right so even if we just check the uh, levels or like a black and white mode um, if you are asking how can you ass assign that you just go to view Proof setup, custom, and you click uh, gray gamma two comma two, and if you click on control Y, you can just switch between uh, gray gamma and RGB. So uh, basically, here you can see, uh, you know, how the things are basically start to to having like a more three dimensionality, right? More volume, and and uh, yeah, that would be the first thing uh, if I had this task. Uh, on your occasion uh, that I would just change, you know, the lighting first, and then of course, respecting the given material, which is like um, already the, the nice patterns and everything, adding those extra maybe, you know, uh, extra like um, placement of the object, like to, 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 to generate the basically more rich environment, right? But I think um, this somehow shows you uh, how can you improve that. And the other thing, is again like keeping in mind that we have uh, this like a you know ambient light going on because you can see especially on this part of the pillar look the the, the back the, the shadows became like almost like pitch black right so I just added like that extra refinement because you know that the pillars like that and if I look at the the floor and I just can imagine that this is like some chamber uh, in a, in a castle and it has like those materials like the stone and it's very reflective it can have like really nice reflection uh, that basically uh, you know uh, that you can basically generate uh, th that feel uh, of that reflection by adding like some ambient light right to the objects so basically it, it immediately pops out the objects more in the scene and make them look much more uh, three-dimensional but at the same time also more realistic right like, uh, you can know that uh, from making a studies, you can know that from making many, uh, uh, you know, concepts, 
but it's just a basic knowledge that um, for instance you can maybe even fix the girl himself because now he stands in the shadow but remember that his uh, sword is not just like a wooden structure he, it has like a metallic object that basically receives and, and bounces back the light uh, a lot even when he is in the shadow right so we can we can bring that feeling uh, back by just uh, yeah placing some nice uh, you know refined uh, lighting scenario on the on the sword itself right so just very quickly we can suggest that there is like some object in the shadow uh, that his sword is like really nicely reflecting back the environment it, the ambience from the shadows is 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 apparent there right so Yeah, I think it's like it's really start to flesh out the whole body of girl like the whole you know look of him much more right now and That's how you can basically remaster things without really yeah, like doing totally new crazy compositions because that's it might be the case that your your client or the project that you will be working on require uh, that approach that you just basically are asked to yeah to just remaster something that's already uh, like legendary and it, it kind of is is awesome um, but it's not up to today's standard right so you just need to bring um, that extra refinement to uh, yeah to to be able to oops I don't I think if there's something chat Derek are you hear us Yes. Uh... Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think you can hear me. I think that's uh, just this yeah. or just dropped. I don't know why, uh, but let me know it, if it works. Yeah. So I would yeah. just I just wanted to continue on the topic that uh, you don't necessarily need to go over for like changing things like totally uh, when you basically are asked to like remaster things and, and to make them you know, uh, to make them more up to the standards of, you know, today's uh, productions. And yeah, basically, you know, uh, with the games or with the productions from like uh, 10 years or like 15 years, uh, we were always like wanted to achieve this like extra, like realistic effect. Uh, but we of course uh, aim for the, the best possible uh, visuals, right? And this was also that part of the task that we wanted to achieve the best results uh, but still being very truthful to the to the main uh, to the to the source we we, we started with right so uh, yeah I think um, in that way you can just keep on pushing and, and making it like much more refined I can tell that for instance the ground right now is much too dark you know so I can either like bring it um, again like some ambience here as I did on the pillar and on the girls right now. So, so you you can say that when you want to improve uh, improve the screens like like we have in the contest, so first you should focus on the lightning and uh, and yeah, so the lightning and values, yeah. Well, so that, that, that's not basically think, not thinking about like you do this crazy uh, textures in the face first uh, place or or thinking about new shades, but just uh, think how the light will be work in new in this condition. Yeah. So like these new games have like very good uh, understanding, much better than the oldest one, uh, how, how the light work in the game. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point. Exactly. Exactly what I want to say that uh, it's just like taking things from the more general uh, to towards like a small details, right? Because uh, we tend to, because we are visual people, right? We are uh, attracted by aesthetics. We are attracted by, uh, you know, the density of details, the, the, the VFX effects. And I think the first Witcher came out in the moment that uh, after, right after Morrowind, I think Oblivion, that there was like a trend for the games to be very glowy, you know, like they tried to hide a lot of um, limitations that the uh, you know that the, 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 the basically the uh, the equipment could generate or the engines were able to handle 
and they were basically yeah uh, overusing like for instance the glowy effect or glow effect or bloom effect right and that basically uh, became a thing because uh, they wouldn't be they wasn't able uh, they weren't able to basically um, you know generate like uh, uh, properly uh, looking uh, naturalistic lighting uh, conditions and I think it's better right now like at this for this specific task uh, what we ask for is basically we want to bring the vibe of the natural place of the real place and of course you can improve the composition but only when you feel uh, basically strong enough and when you feel that it's a it's a necessary this is necessary thing right it's a necessary thing to to incorporate because um, for instance if you work on like a gray box um, models or like a basically just like a screen grabs from the game that's unfinished client will ask you to do like hey Dara can you do like a quick mock-up of like how uh, this map would look like you know in fully flesh out with textures and like a lighting and whatever they won't ask you to basically redo the whole gameplay the gameplay level design that they don't want you to make like a super epic new castle if they want to only ask you for like a ruins for instance right so we have to be able um to read like what are the needs for the production and what are the needs for the for the clients and basically that's why we also gave you guys this task because uh, we wanted to see how you guys read uh, yeah, what, what we prepare and what, what our needs for, for this task are, you know. So I would say, uh, yeah, like for those that, that stuck the most to the original material uh, and basically improve the lighting and then, you know, like a small things like a, uh, like the, like a small compositional things like I will uh, show you on the other shot. Uh, that's actually the way that we are home, basically. That's what basically... Um, the task was about you know so um i would say I, I could improve upon this shot and keep on working but i really hope that this gives you a good understanding how can you start and how can you start refining because of course i'm at the moment that uh, most of the th things are already set let me just bring back my discord because i would like to see also um and maybe like yeah maybe i would like to just bring like some extra refinement here so maybe i could just texture that or like yeah just find like some interesting photos for uh for the patterns and try to populate this area here you know but it has to come with the knowledge that you know exactly how the interior light reacts and we also gave you uh the external like uh, the exterior shot for the landscape which i think is much easier than basically uh, lighting inside of the objects or inside of the, uh, the structures uh, when it's like a lot of bounce back and like reflections and a lot of materials that have totally different material definition right because for instance like this wooden frame of course it would receive still some light but it's not as reflective like this for instance uh, like this floor you know like the, the roughness of the material uh, the, the rock the the, um, the structure of the wood uh, uh, as, as long as it's not wet, it's not as reflective like, for instance, the floor, right? So these are the things that you basically know um, from the experience. But uh, we also wanted to see how you guys tackled that. And we didn't say that, oh, we cannot use like the reference, we cannot use the photos, because actually Job as a concept artist is using references. And then actually after years of using that and yeah, using photos and learning 3D and being able to understand like physical based uh, conditions you are able to do like yeah just a f overpaint that already looks i guess better and 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 has like that that natural natural feel to that and i still didn't yeah use any reference yet so it's it's basically um how i would basically uh give you the um uh, the note to start with right so i'm gonna save this file just in case uh let me know if there are any questions uh so far uh uh, Wojtek, maybe you can bring some? Yeah, I see if there's... Uh, I think... I don't see any questions about what you made, but we can start the questions from the live demo questions uh, channel. So... Yeah, sure. If yeah. you don't mind. 
Yeah. I'm fine, and uh, hopefully, like this first uh, part uh, was uh, informative enough. Uh, it was like a 20, 20 plus minutes, but I hope I, yeah, I tried to condense as much information. Yeah, and hope you guys uh, liked it. Yeah. It's for me. I think uh, everyone agreed that uh, it was a quick improvement of uh, the first uh, screenshot that you showed, and yeah. Yeah, I see that also people writing that. Yeah, it was very informative. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Wojtek, maybe a couple uh, like questions and maybe we can uh, do a very quick overpass on the external shot, uh, basically okay. ex ex exterior shot. Sorry. OK, so I start with the live demo channel. Uh, uh, questions and yeah if you have some questions uh, guys you can always write new uh, i think where, 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 where should i put it uh, i would like to see. because i see that uh... okay. okay yeah go, sorry yeah. Go ahead. yeah you can change the live demo questions yeah so we go from the first one from hanno 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 i hope so how do you get better at learning? Struggle a lot and can't seem to get what I need like. I am a missing a key ingredient. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that's a very good question. I think it's very important also, very, um, very, uh, very vital question actually, because we have a lot of uh, people uh, that ask us about that at the school or like uh, on a daily basis. Like, uh, like I've been asking that same question for many years and, and trust me it like my my path from the beginning wasn't that actually smooth as people might see because uh, we actually started with the moment that uh, youtube wasn't a thing uh, there was no actually like um, educational um, tips or educational platforms for uh, for the guys that wanted to do like illustrations because i started like just being basically inspired by you know other art and and i just wanted to do the same uh digitally but uh yeah that the beginnings were like uh not that much resources and today actually is the opposite it's that much resources that it might might actually become too overwhelming and i totally uh get why some people are actually asking those questions because uh i also have to learn on a daily basis you know i, I also have to learn uh, specific things that I want to get better at this or that and sometimes that yeah the amount of information is just like overwhelming so I think it's about finding the way to uh, to learn uh, to, to learn how to learn efficiently you know however that sounds it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty important it's pretty I think it's a key uh, to find your own way of learning and we of course uh, want to give you that uh, that answer uh, but I think efficient learning for me at least is that uh, I learn by doing what I like so I'm not asking myself to, to like uh, if I were starting out I wouldn't ask myself to draw like a thousand hands poses or thousand like feet poses or like thousand hats um, maybe I would master that but I rather wanted to do like a, yeah, I just gonna do like a full illustration or full concept that reflects the, the, the character and I can just basically study on that, uh, the, the anatomy for instance. And if I feel there's like a lot of, uh, there are a lot of struggles and a lot of things along the way, because I guarantee you there will be a lot, even when you, when you like specific topic, when you like specific subject, and you think you you will be tackling that with enjoy there will be a lot of frustration for sure and i would say that of course doing like a studies on the side but studies of something that makes you happy like for instance uh, what worked for me greatly in 2014 was doing studies from the movies and then i just basically was able to uh yeah to i was doing a lot of frames and i was doing a lot of speed paintings and i was inspired by specific like frames or specific colors and I kind of felt like this is getting embedded into my blood and I started to do it more naturally. So every time that I wanted to sketch out something, of course, like the references are the one thing that I, that I, that I keep on the side. But the other thing, I just started to really uh, uh, match my feelings with my brain in terms of the colors, in terms of the feel, in terms of the mood I'm going for. And it basically was based, it was all uh, grown because of 
the constant uh, studies of the movie stills, right? So basically, this was for me efficient learning. Uh, when I got my first jobs, I didn't have time to study anymore. So I had to treat every job as my uh, as my learning path, as my learning process. So, for instance, um, if I have a project that I have to design like a vehicle, uh, and I didn't have that um, experience before, uh, I try to keep that task as something that I learn, that I can learn, and I use all my power, all my methods, all my techniques in order to get the job done, but at the same time, I deepen my knowledge as much on the, on the given subject. So, for instance, if you have to design specific thing, you try to get the, the story of that. You try to get immersed with something maybe that, that's, that's very similar in terms of the function, in terms, in terms of the history, in terms of the material usage, in terms of the technology. So I would say this is the efficient way of learning, you know, like efficient way of learning is something that you basically try to economize the time spent on the uh, on the learning and already the incorporating that either into the commercial work or your own work that, that's going to be your portfolio piece. Right. So this is for me uh, the efficient learning. And that's how I basically became better at learning by just basically doing what I like and challenging myself constantly, you know, because if I if I stayed at the moment back in 2007, 2008, when I was like, uh, when I, yeah, I was bad at, at everything. And I just wanted to, okay, but I'm bad at like, for instance, drawing guys or like uh, drawing postures or drawing like a animals or drawing uh, mountains. And I would only do that for three years. I would guarantee you that probably I would be doing that amazingly, but what about the rest, right? It's like, it's, the more you tackle on in terms of like, um, you know, learning, the better it becomes for your output later on. So I found like, for instance, yeah, movie stills because they have all, all the information, colors, composition, design, uh, mood, uh, characters, uh, postures, uh, dynamics, um, yeah, vehicles, uh, everything. And I basically found that was my way of efficient learning that got me better at what I do and, and yeah, got me much better in, in terms of learning. So. I think it's like uh, finding that uh, that that ingredient, that key ingredient is is it might be very uh, it might be very um, personal, but uh, yeah, one of the tasks that we give a lot at focal point is basically doing like uh, movie seals or like uh, frames of other uh, other uh, old masters, and how can you basically learn from them? Because uh, you know everything like a frame from the movie or the painting of art, of other uh, painter. Is already what how they see or how they perceive the uh, you know the nature how they perceive the composition, but why not to learn from that right? It's it's the ready source already ready source of inspiration and ready source of knowledge. So I guess for me that that worked that way. I hope that uh, answered the question. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. yeah. You have the answer. Very comprehensive answer. I'm also happy to learn that you use movie stills to learn. I've been painting favorite movies since as well. So yeah, so in and out, yeah, you are on the good way to <laughs> improve yourself and find the key ingredient. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, I can say myself also like, uh, I remember that this uh, thing that you say that even the all your work, you think about them, like how you can improve yourself, even if you're working for someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was also me for me was uh, something uh, breaking uh, my thinking about my work that mm -hmm. even if I have to work something for someone, I still can learn from that. And yeah, to improve myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, uh, because, uh, you know, to be honest, like all the masters uh, with all the amazingness that they had, uh, they were also inspired by others, you know, and like I think the best actually inspiration we have is actually the inspiration we have in our grasp of the, our hands. It's very close to us. It's basically the nature. So as long as you are able to go out and, and see the nature and see how the lighting reacts, how it basically uh, affects our material definition and how we basically can see all the ongoing conditions, weather conditions or lighting conditions uh, is the best feeling because you can basically get inspired the most. And I remember, for instance, when I was doing that uh, Mouse Guard uh, movie that, that unfortunately got cancelled, 
and since everything was hap was happening from the point of view of the mouse or like mice and you had to basically uh, get on the ground and, and imagine that you are such a small thing walking in our in our world and our world that for instance like a like like the flowers for us are small but for them it might be big you know so that that changed the perspective totally and like it it can let you study objects on the microscopic level so i think that that's very important also to to use what we have uh, in front of our eyes you know like even just doing like a just normal silly study of your desktop right now that you have even with discord open and try to paint it in on your on your canvas i think it's a great way of like learning things right so yeah, whatever you guys like. I think that's really important to find something that you like first, not to force yourself uh, towards doing something that's not really uh, beneficial. Because uh, um, I would say instead of making 10 or 20 uh, like a mindless studies, it's better to do maybe one that's like very well thought through and like very well uh, studied, right? And, and basically uh, gives you um, as much information or even more than like doing 10 uh, that you basically do because you think you have to, right? So, yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think. I think. I think uh, it was very deep answer. So, I think everyone touch what they what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. So. If you want to start drawing or take my next questions or... Uh, yeah, I can quickly take this one up and then we can wrap up with some questions. Uh, if there are any new ones, maybe you can just also bring them uh, uh, along the way. Uh, because I wanted to quickly touch upon like this one since it's like an external exterior shot. So we will have like a buff uh, very quickly tackled, tackled on. Uh, so of course, first thing, I don't want to change the composition of the girl standing here because we we were also asked you to kind of keep that aspect of like a gameplay, which was very, um, I would say, very immersive uh, for the whole uh, for the whole purpose of the of the contest. So basically, I can just do a very um, rough uh, selection. Uh, I think I use Mark tool, uh, right? No, it's a quick selection tool. Sorry. Uh, and just basically, yeah, just um, just um, extract Geralt from the screen, from the from the composition, and uh, yes, so we, I can move it around. Oh wait, yes, it's via cut. Okay, so uh, I can move it around, and now um, if I have uh, my Geralt, uh, I think what works what doesn't work like what works first like for me the composition is pretty cool maybe we can exaggerate actually this is a good example of exaggeration a little bit uh, but maybe first let me just uh, divide the planes still so i have uh, the mid ground background and foreground uh, separately it's also very important to to find your way of working efficiently when it comes to like layering things it's much easier uh, trust me uh, I have a too high tolerance, I guess, in the selection tools. So I there you go. Uh, so I can just yeah, like roughly, yeah, so select some of those structures. I can just paint them in later, later on as well, or just use like some textures. But now, uh, what I don't want is that uh, that foreground element that just got selected. Uh, so, of course, the frame itself is not a super high uh, resolution, so it might be a little bit like a, the edges can be jacked uh, slightly. But I think I have everything that I need, so I'm just going to cut it. I'm just going to increase the size of the canvas slightly. I think uh, scaling uh, in Photoshop is, not, is actually quite good, even when you just stretch the pixels it still uh, is manageable because you can do a new clean uh, brush strokes on the proper resolution. So uh, I just beat it up to four and a half thousand. It's, it's all right for overpaints. So I have this one separated. I have a, a background uh, on the other hand. And maybe let's have a look into my references. 
So quick, uh, first thing, I just have my references folder. As you can see, I'm trying at least to some degree to keep those organized. So uh, yeah, like since I'm a console artist and I do like a lot of stuff on a weekly basis, I have to be able to provide things as efficiently and lose as least amount of time as I can. So for instance, if I have these skies here, uh, yeah, I can I can find like some really interesting uh, stuff that I'm just gathering all the on the way. Sometimes I just also shoot my references. Uh, sometimes I just capture uh, the photos from my friends that run Photobash uh, website. So um, that's pretty that's pretty cool that you can basically uh, yeah take the, the inspiration either these days like the, even the phones have like great camera so you can just shoot a photos. I remember like one of the uh, one of the projects uh, actually many years ago. Uh, let me go on my art station. Uh, so this was I think for National Geographic. I think this one. Uh, yeah, I think this one. And when I was uh, doing like a lot of like different uh, VFX for um, for the uh, you know creating of the planets. And for instance, I had like some shots like the clouds, uh, like those. And I basically just took my references, my photos from that I took from the plane when I was coming back from uh, from some trip, and 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 basically just merged them along with painting. So it's basically yeah, finding the references and then uh, sorting them out and putting them into the right uh, folders is very important. It it saves you a lot of time. So maybe I can just try uh, something like that. that. Okay. So so we have this uh, question. One of this. Uh, do we need to design always something new? How to use reference and, and inspiration? So I think this uh, is because you're starting uh, talking about the references. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is a good uh, time also to answer this. Uh, yeah, this absolutely. Like it, it all depends on like uh, what your uh, what your task is, right? It's like the 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 the, the possibility to design uh, the original thing is is awesome, but it's not always the case when it comes to like specific, uh, you know, uh, specific uh, industry tasks, because uh, it might be that you, uh, you will be designing, uh, for instance, the new uh, level design uh, for the Witcher. And you, of course, can be, you, you, you might be able to, to take those structures and design them separately. But at the same time, how you can generate the whole level or how can you basically design the whole the whole environment and this might be the thing that um, you have to use uh, the references uh, for the best results uh, from the nature or from the ones that you took or from the movies or yeah it's it's really it's very broad question because for instance if uh, if I have to design like for instance the castle or if I have to design like specific bit of architecture it doesn't mean that I'm going straight and like oh I'm doing YOLO and start like drawing castle because I'm so good like no, like you just get the right, the right inspiration first. You, for instance, if I look at my references for the castles, look, I have a lot of inspiration. It, it might be art of other guys that I really like. It might be the real places, like the real elements that basically uh, let me understand um, the aspects of architecture, the material that they use, the shape they use, how the basically shape language was basically completed on those objects. Uh, what sort of material definition we can we can have, or what sort of like a technological aspects um, those buildings feature? Uh, knowing also uh, styles of architecture, for instance, help tremendously. Being able to like uh, for, for instance combine like uh, Romanesque architecture along with Gothic and and some Renaissance uh, elements to it. Uh, this is basically uh, some of the things that you have to start asking yourself a question when you when you basically start sketching out. So. Yeah, if 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 the if the task was basically to design this whole fortress, it might be a different approach. But this shot is actually remastered the shot, so you of course might be able to change some shapes, might be able to uh, to fine tune some of the some of the shapes, but also according to the technological aspect of the medieval castles or the fortress, uh, to the material definition, uh, to the possible uh, like shapes that have been uh, created. Maybe some of the like the ruins might be also like your uh, inspiration. So, uh, for instance, like I had one of my pieces uh, that the huge inspiration was uh, uh, one of those uh, one of those like uh, ruins were a huge inspiration. 
and then it basically brought me to making uh, uh, this piece, which is basically one shot, but it has all the information needed to build that uh, shot already. Like it has like its uh, shape language, it has its form, it has like statues, it has like a uh, design um, design clues, and and basically like the patterns that basically are very important to use, and and the whole basically. Uh, composition is cohesive, is consistent, right? So this basically might be the one of the tasks that you have to design this specific map or this specific part of the map, this specific part of the uh, gameplay area, and 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 you just do one shot, but it's supported by multiple sketches or multiple separate elements, or maybe even like research uh, from the realistic references, from the realistic photos. Uh, yeah, that's that's how it is, you know. So uh, we don't need to always like. Uh, because this is also a very important thing. Like I see a lot of people try to reinvent the wheel, which is not a case in this industry, right? Like we, you are not a, uh, you are not creating something from uh, like yeah from from beginning like again like, um, uh, like yeah you just don't you 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 don't do like um, uh, basically the new wheel. You you basically if you for instance do like a sci-fi base or sci-fi rocket or sci-fi spaceship you still uh, get referred to what we have already so what technological aspects we use for building rockets or what is what are the technical technological aspects of using the you know the engines and how do, do we build them maybe we have already we are already evolving some uh, technologic uh, technology for uh, combustion engines uh, that might uh, prevent them from dying or for, from like basically being angsting, extinct, you know, in the, um, in the, in the, in the world. So maybe this, those clues might be a good foundation for your own designs, right? But uh, re reference research and understanding what you have to design are always the most important things, right? So I hope that answer uh, the question. Yeah, I think uh, it was like always a lot of information but <laughs> yeah so yeah i think it's, it's, it's a good answer i don't know i don't know if bernabe is here and if he can say that it's okay for him um but awesome. yeah yeah i think it's uh i think it's good to, to know that we don't always have to in we don't have to invite him you things just in invent, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what exists and uh, use this for us advantage to make something uh, new but basing on the still on the existing world yeah exactly uh so getting back to our work uh, very quickly uh as you see i'm not for now at least i'm not really like uh, getting rid of uh the objects i just trying again like I had like the reference that I just placed it, like the photo, and it basically gives me information of how I want to build my lighting on the scene, right? So I'm trying right now to bring all the objects, all the elements towards this lighting scenario that's basically dictated my, by my sky, by by the uh, by um, that uh, that whole um, that whole uh, lighting uh, condition, right? So. Yes, speaking of that, I'm just like uh, adjusting the lighting on on those like a wooden poles that are somehow like a, already like broken and just sticking out of the ground and and basically yeah, I'm trying to match the lighting to 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 that lighting uh, from the reference and it kind of looks already unified, right? Because um, if you look at couple uh, I just want to see. Yeah, if you look a couple steps before, it looked just flat because there was no lighting information. It was just basically some low poly model with some uh, diffuse um, diffuse color or like a just albedo texture on top of that, right? So. I'm right now building the information of what the lighting is and having in mind again that we can support our three-dimensional look by the ambient light from the sky, I can just put just slightly more like a bluish hues into the shadows uh, just to generate a little bit extra 
three dimensionality on the object, right? So yeah, I don't now what you think that about uh, the light uh, because you changed the sky, yeah? so this yes. is a new sky. Yes. So you now changing about thinking about the light to corresponding the new sky that you put. Yeah? Absolutely, so... absolutely. And I just I think I forgot to mention because for that actually, even when you have some sort of information that the, the, the sun or whatever is going on in here, you can see the whole objects were still very flat, right? It was basically non, sorry, non correspondent to, to the sky at all, right? So now we are trying to change it. And of course, if I go into black and white mode, you can still, you can still see a lot of issues, right? Like for instance, uh, the, the castle, the, the ruins in the background, they are still not really receiving any lighting at all uh, from our sky, but it's an easy fix because we already know the direction of the of the lighting. We know exactly what sort of mood we are uh, going for. We know uh, what are where is the sun and how is it positioned. And yeah, now I can incorporate those informations to our uh, flat. Um, I wouldn't say gray box, gray box, but yeah, a very flat uh, a base uh, model, right? So even a small snippet like a rim that basically uh, those objects are very much exposed to the lighting and they are very close in terms of like, they are very close to the sky and you can see the sun is very strong, very intense. You can see that by how it, how it impacts the, the clouds in here, you can just generate some really interesting uh, lighting scenarios here. Uh, on the object, so also you have to think about which face is, is is facing the sky and in what direction, right? So, as you can see, I'm trying to also bring a little bit more volume on this like tower here. Uh, so I'm just colorizing that, but at the same time, I'm trying to uh, be as uh, you know as specific about the lighting we have as I can. So it it looks unified. It looks like it belongs to that lighting condition, right? So and as you see, I didn't even change or I didn't even exaggerate some shit. I could actually. Uh, let's do that, right? Let maybe just I can uh, just take some of those parts and maybe one of the tower could be just more um, like overgrown over the others like basically the fortress um, main tower or main like a, a supply command would be there and yeah just try to kind of feel it in comp the composition and at the same time of course it would receive uh, lighting uh, very drastically now we could see that on the on such a structure because it's like a much much bigger structure and you could clearly see how it receives the lighting right so these are the small things that we wanted to address when it comes to like fine-tuning the composition right okay so we have uh, some question about the process how how can we control the values while working in the in an overpainting like this for it to not get muddy moody I don't know. So uh, I, as you see, I'm once in a while I'm just turning on and off uh, and the value structure um, uh, mode. Um, it basically just let me keep my eyes fresh in terms of like uh, the right values and and yeah, just to see um, the value structure on the piece uh, and just to control it, right? Yeah. Okay. So this uh, is common hand in the, the shortcut that you show us earlier to change uh, control U, yeah? Exactly. Control Y, control Y. Yeah. Y, control Y, so control Y to change uh, the grayscale. So yeah, so yeah, it's very handy to quick, quick change the values. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so to control, so you say that you still have to remember just to do it, do it often and check uh, how the values uh, change during when you work. Yeah. Yeah, and how they work, right? 
Yeah. On the other hand, like we can of course bring a little bit more color to the objects that are in the shadow because it, it kind of looked bland and kind of set, you know, like I know it's a set location, but now we incorporated like some extra lighting and it's still set and kind of scary, but it has much more life, right? It, it's really inviting you to explore this world, even though uh, it might be scary and tricky, it still invites you to, to get there, right? So, for instance, look at how uh, vegetation on the on the um, on the rocks look like, and how can we improve that? Like, of course, like we know. Uh, for instance, if you go to black and white, you can see that the spot there's like a lot of dark spaces here. It doesn't really um, receive any lighting. And I would do one thing very quickly: just first, you know, estimate, you know, the lighting and how it would impact all those elements, you know, on in the 3D space. So even like suggesting like a very roughly uh, where it where it is where it might be how it would be basically generated on such a big uh, structure, it 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 creates like this like a three D three D volume already on the object right so and I'm using the original colors from the from the uh, from the screen I can always just refine them. And I think it would be good maybe to beat up also some of the greens because um, they are exposed to light right now. So it just kind of, yeah, gives you like more volume, right? It immediately starts to feel like, yeah, this is like a, this is not a flat surface anymore, right? It's, uh... So I see that you often zoom and zoom, zoom in and zoom out. To, so you have the, why do this for? I don't know, I might out. have, I might have some problems. <laughs> it's it's just the, the thing that I, it kind of keeps me fresh because I can just always zoom out and see in like how my composition looks like, how the colors look like, how they, I just prefer to look at from far. It's just, if you look, uh, I was working like that for, for a while when I was um, starting out and later on when I zoom out, it's like, oh, my composition, my, my, my proportions are so off, right? So it just keeps my eyes fresh on the, on the subject, right? Okay. And so, so I assume that you help you to uh, keep everything uh, constant on all the picture that you know that you not focus only on the small detail and then as you say it's, you zoom out and everything is okay but you Absolutely. spend hours on, hours on this one piece but in in the end you don't see it even and all the pieces is just miss out yeah absolutely yeah exactly as you say so uh it just to keep things clear and, and just to keep myself um you know uh, control everything from the beginning right so it's like I used to do, <laughs> of course, like uh, when you start out, um, I used to rely a lot on heavy accidents, but not anymore. Uh, since uh, we work under time pressure all the time, everything needs to be done fast and you have to be able to, to tackle on problems uh, relatively fast, right? So right now I can just suggest some of like uh, highlights on the rocks just to give it extra volume, right? Give it extra, um, uh, you know, um, definition. So we can see, of course, with time, it improves, right? It, it, it I can even like, uh, for instance, like merge the sky just slightly more with, with the style that I actually use for painting. So I can just basically keep the same values, but maybe just over paint it a little bit just to unify it. Or sometimes maybe I just have idea of maybe I should actually just, uh, you know, close the sky somehow here since I have already a lot of information that the sun is just crossing that structure anyway. And maybe you can just close this, um, like lock down the composition, you know? Okay, so maybe this question also will be correct for what we are do doing. Ahmed asking is, what is visual hook, hook, hook and how do you use it in your artwork? Uh, that's a good question. I think it partly uh, applies to uh, to the focal points of the scene and what basically you want uh, the viewer 
uh, to look at or to just to stay a little bit longer, right? You just have, for instance, like epic scene and like, yeah, you look at it like, oh, it's epic, you know, that's it. But then you just want to do the composition that really is memorable. So, for instance, like, like if I look at uh, my works, I always find like mistakes and I just hate a lot of things. But at the same time, uh, if I build something like gradually uh, for a prolonged amount of time or like, um, yeah, I just take my time and do like a proper stuff. Uh, I just, for instance, uh, come up with uh, Windmill Town, which is basically has a lot of uh, small visual hooks that, that, that makes it quite memorable and it makes it like uh, iconic, so to speak, not because of the composition, not because the, the windmill is huge and the story might be interesting. It, it is part of that. But for instance, I put like the, you know, that little guy that basically just pulling off the ropes, maybe like some, uh, maybe he actually let this guy go to the sailing, you know, and he, they finish like a, you know, uh, unloading stuff, uh, duties. Uh, this guy is like rowing towards like out of, outside of the port. Like there's like a lot of small guys. You can see that maybe even, I'm not sure which resolution it is, but uh, for instance, if you look at those guys on the water, uh, come on. So yeah, they are rowing, but one of them is like pulling out like a, like a fishnet or whatever. So basically I just like to add those extra bits of information uh, that are not really uh, visible at the first glance, but they are there. And for those that, that want to stay a little bit longer at my picture, they can basically find it, right? So it's really important for me to to kind of like um, build those visual hooks that, that attract the viewer, the spectator to, to stay a little bit longer, right? So yeah, like, oh, like, yeah, like just even the story wise, like the design wise, the whole composition, like why this whole windmill is like such a big thing, right? Why is it like so enormous? Maybe it actually, maybe itself is a visual hook that, that gives you like a, yeah, that it generates idea that, that, that lets you stay a little bit longer and start to wondering like, uh, what's the technology behind it, right? Why does it so big? Like, it, it should probably have like a hurricane or like a huge wind to to be able to operate but maybe it's like something else you know that we don't know and um, that basically it might be a visual hook on its own you know so um, I think that that's how it is for me and this is partly uh, what you what you can also use for your focal point in the scene right but focal point usually in the scene is uh, is more about the like building compositions and those visual hooks are basically like those like uh, attachments that, 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 that don't let you get away from the painting very quickly, you know, and just we want to study that, right? So that's how I perceive that, basically. Yeah, nice. It's something new that I hear, yeah. So, yeah, I was thinking uh, the most are like this is the uh, focal point of the drones. This is the main visual hook, but that is saying that giving additional story for the pictures with small details like small history in the history yeah? story in the story exactly the yeah. picture is uh, giving something more to stay and see that this is yeah a good piece of the world this piece of art yeah exactly so i'm just doing like a quick last minute uh like corrections to Geralt himself uh just adding him a little bit more um a little bit more uh, um, form and the value uh, change just to make him uh, more uh, like aligned with with lighting conditions some color balance to to beat up the um, the ambience here and of course yeah I could uh, improve uh, keep on improving a lot of things in the scene uh, but uh, yeah let's see what we can quickly improve I think the foreground can be much darker actually so as you see, I'm not afraid of using uh, levels a lot. Uh, they just basically let me control the values all the time. And I, of course, if I just keep it like that, it looks too dark, right? So I need to, I need to just uh, synchronize that more with lighting condition, and and I would even do a small color correction so it fits kind of a little bit better. Uh, and I'm just. I'm just duplicating the mask, so it only applies to this, to the shaded areas, sorry. Uh, just a small correction that in the shadow, the ambient is basically, yeah, again, according to the, to the sky, right? So,
And of course, I can just take some of those bits and, and, and overpaint to add a little bit more volume to those rocks, to the patterns on the ground. Okay, so maybe question about the color, because you started talking about the colors also. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel is asking, how do you choose colors as so accurately on digital media? Which exercise besides live drawing help you improve the most? Uh, as if you have the opportunity to go back in the time and study with all the resources we have now with technology, how would you arrange your, yourself towards, towards learning? Mm, that's a good so that actually that's a good question i think the first one again like i would again do the same so uh, do like more color uh like uh, like compositions from the movies or uh from the from the references from the from the nature just to understand the colors better and and the lighting situation regarding how would i approach um uh, today's techniques um i think um I don't know. <laughs> I think uh, that uh, I still learn uh, all the time, you know, even when it doesn't mean that we teach people that we cannot learn. You know? Like it's, there's a lot of things that we have to learn all the time uh, because this is very, uh, very competitive uh, industry. And actually it's good because it drives you to, to become better and to, to become more efficient, to become faster. Yeah. And, and basically it's super exciting, you know? So I would say, um, I would always uh, lean uh, towards uh, uh, understanding the, uh, the, the fundamentals first, but I wouldn't uh, neglect like a new tools, uh, uh, like a VR or like being able to paint, draw, photo bash, using 3D, anything just to, because you never know what's gonna be useful in your pipeline. And of course, the foundations are still the most important, but trust me, uh, being able to experiment and incorporating new technologies or new ways to your, uh, to your uh, work is a huge thing, you know? So I would, uh, I would say uh, something about that. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Um, uh, regarding the demo right now, I'm just doing the last final pushes uh, with some like nice reflections on on the Geralt um, swords, just to beat up objects a little bit more, you know, and refine it. So even when he's standing in front of like the dark object, I have the lighting that's not artificially forced. It's actually um, uh, subject to um, to the background, right? And for the comparison, uh, again, like the value structure is a big thing. Like, as you can see, the fortress stayed dark as well, but the whole lighting scenario got so uh, adjusted to that, right? To, uh, to the scene. So uh, we might just slightly fine tune that. Of course, this already looks too fake, so we need to reduce it. Oops. Okay, so maybe, uh, yeah, it's, it's talking about your, talking about your inspiration and learning. I think it's, you a bit answer one question, but I think I can read it. I am a student, but one of my seniors told me that five years into the industry, people's work stagnates. Do you see that sometimes? Is there anything you do to keep yourself learning and improving? I think you mm. a bit say about that. Yeah, it also it's very much dependent on you, right? It's like a, it's a very a very general question, and like it in every industry it can be like that. If you work five five years and you got all the problems like back pain or whatever, you might get tired or you might get uh, burnout or you might get stagnant uh, very quickly. But it's only up to you how you can push that. And I would say. Um, uh, don't only work i would say don't only work on towards specific thing i would say um find a ways to release the tension and, and make yourself fresh so for instance like i like to swim for instance 
if I'm so tired, like all my back and everything is in pain, I just go for a hardcore training on the swimming pool. This resets my mind totally because I'm so tired that I barely breathe and I just, um, yeah, reset my whole brain, reset my, reset my whole mind. And it just keeps me fresh, you know, it just keeps me uh, in the shape and, and, and basically let me, let me do, uh, let me tackle on and other obstacles on a daily basis because, uh, for instance, last time I do, uh, yeah, very, very stressful projects. Uh, because we are on very tight deadlines and I was, uh, I had a chance to actually uh, build also a team of people that helped me on that. And it's going amazing, but at the same time, it's very stressful and all other things are uh, basically making me, making me even more stressed. So I would say uh, like finding a peaceful time for yourself, for your family, uh, just basically doing something that's not art related at all is uh, gonna keep you fresh and you never get stagnant after that because uh, burnout moments happen happens to everyone and it just comes in and comes out for every artist there is no way that you can just be like a smile on your face and you can you just do 20 hours a day of work it's at some point it will cut up with you right so i would say you have to find the ways to um to be productive but to be also happy about what you are doing and uh, yeah, to be healthy, you know, because it's very important, right? So uh, yeah, and um, I think uh, that's it. Yeah, it's a good point of view that you should have always something additional that you can have rest and, you know, reset your brain, not only focusing on the work, yeah because because yeah this uh, this is just this is the, just the work yeah we play making the art but it's also when you starting working of course it's, it's our passion it's your work yeah yeah but in the yeah, end of the day your passion, but you know, yeah you're good to have something also yeah it's your passion it's your work but at the same time you have to understand that you have your life as well and even though i can tell like with hundred person assurance that I sacrifice everything in my life. It's not always a good thing, right? It's just, uh, you just have to, yeah, you just have to know your limits. You just have to be able to, uh, to, uh, reset, I would say, and just to basically, yeah, uh, be able to catch the breath. Right. So, yeah, great. Okay, I have a question uh, from the Straudo. It's uh, about the changing of the light and color. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like the emotional feel of the scene, scene is the same with the cooler cast sky rather than warmer? Would an alternative approach to this scene would be to rationalize the original sky color by time of day and reflect that into the approach of the la landscape? Yeah, it's like um, it's um, it's my basically re uh, like reinterpretation, and as you see, like uh, with a lot of like revised or like remastered uh, projects, it's it's sometimes it's just hit the point. Sometimes it's just like people don't like it at all. Uh, but that's how I basically see this location, um, and of course. Uh, it might be just one of the options, you know, like, um, because the other option would be like, Hey, Derek, uh, maybe let's try, uh, let's try to do, uh, like more warmer tone, uh, composition. So I would try to tackle on the same, you know, so it's, I'm just, yeah, like it's just one of the options and it just shows you how can you basically tackle on that. Right. And, uh, but I agree like uh, different colors and can, emotionally affect you differently and, and the whole uh, the whole location right so yeah that's uh yeah uh, i think it's uh, it's also dependent on on your what your client want yeah so if yeah, you exactly say, exactly yeah so. yeah you can have like you see you have uh, free hand to change the mute and the colors go but uh, but some can say yeah, we want this red one because everything is around these uh, warm uh, tones and 
and the stories about this that this is the red scenario yeah absolutely i agree yeah i think i'm uh, pretty done with this one and of course you can keep on pushing and, and making it better and and much better and uh, but uh, that's uh, I hope it clarifies uh, how you can guys approach this contest. You have, of course, uh, last 36 hours or something. Uh, so, actually, no, like if you, I think they have a whole Sunday and almost whole Monday, right? I think uh, on the 8th, 8 p.m., I think we end in the Monday. So, almost two days, yes, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, almost two days. You can do five more pieces. <laughs> Definitely, you know, like uh, I've done two, so uh, you can definitely do more. Uh, and I cheer for that, you know, I would like to see, I am happy that uh, uh, this community grows and let it, let it, let it go, right? Like we definitely, we definitely want to do more of those stuff, more, more activities like that. And yes, it's, uh, it's awesome. Like uh, I'm very happy uh, many of you guys are here with us and hope you enjoy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we have time for a few uh, questions more. Uh, yeah. Maybe like just like uh, let me just uh, compile those two. So. Uh, okay. So. So maybe now more questions. Our professional work. Uh, so Adam ask. Um, how often do you guys look over critics of other professional works? I've started sharing my work daily with other students and I feel like image, images made of my own are much worse in comparison. And second question, well, maybe it's ask uh, answer for this one. And I don't know if I understand the first question. Uh, um, it's like I a... it's more like about the critic of your... Uh, of your work, professional work, it's how you approach the critic. And when oh, someone's... okay. Uh, uh, so, of course, like when you work with people, uh, you are constantly in a brainstorms of ideas and like we have to change that or that. And yeah, like maybe try this option or, or that option. And, and, and basically, like you just have to be fixed skinned, I would say, <laughs> not to get too attached to the pictures or designs you are creating uh, so uh, in that way it, it, it generates a lot of like uh, conversations and you basically communicate with the clients verbally and visually right so it's very important to have like uh, also verbal uh, skills for uh, yeah pushing your ideas because sometimes it's about like what you whatever you like but sometimes it's like they like something that's totally off you know in your case or in your uh, in your uh, opinion so I would say it's um, Approaching critic is like a really matter, like a, a differs. Like for instance, if I work on my own piece, I can just always send the stuff to my friends to show it. Like like, like me and Mikkel, we do a lot of like uh, after hours talks, and we can just share between each other the, the pieces. And sometimes like he's so hyped about something, and it's like, oh, how can, how do you like my new design? And it's like, ah, I, I like the you know, I like the, I like this prefer like prefer the previous one more and like oh like like sometimes you just but we know each other so well that um, giving an honest critic is very important right it's very um, it's very um, it's very vital is a key to to achieve that the better results so uh, yeah I'm just used to that you know like I'm not like uh, so attached to that anymore uh, I'm attached to my own pictures so to speak right I'm attached to my own designs my own personal pieces. But when it comes to work, like uh, professional work, it's, yeah, it's, it's normal thing, you know, like even if I art direct thing, if, even if I art direct projects, if I have people that work uh, with me and like I give them the feedback and sometimes they can give me a feedback in return as well. So it's very collaborative effort. And I would say like uh, approaching critic, it's not something that you get offended or you go, oh, like, oh, I just going to cry because someone doesn't like my idea. It's not about that. It's, it's about basically being professional and being able to incorporate that. Uh, because we all work towards the same goal, right? Towards the best possible output. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I can assume that, as you say, you also look for the critic from, like, from, like you say, from the Mihao or 
some friends because absolutely uh, yeah we do it, it help you to grow like the artist yeah because you see that someone else what what is uh, good in your work for someone else yeah because you can think about oh this castle i made a great castle but but someone else say oh no no this castle is okay but i very like this and i know due to uh, yeah on the horse yeah uh, totally so... totally man it's like there's no one person on the earth that uh, that just got born and and he does that everyone likes it you know there is always like uh, some something that it might be a uh, the right critic or it might be that the critic for the sake of critic you know so uh, just just get used to that and as i said like grow the thick skin because uh, uh you won't uh you won't please everyone basically so even when you think that, that i'm pushing this idea through to the client and maybe they don't like it or maybe they love it but they feel like it's not fitting for the project right so yeah that's 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 the way it is I think it's also that Adam was uh, saying that um, he is uh, feeling bad about his work when he uh, compromises his work to others when he want to give the want to critic from someone. But I think uh, that we shouldn't. It's my opinion. I don't know if you agree that uh, the, for my advice from Adam that he w should to watch. How he improved, so he should compromise his work to his past work, not to someone else's work, because he doesn't know how long and how uh, what force did the, the someone else put to this work. Yeah? Well, partly yes, I would say partly yes, but partly no, as at the same time, because sometimes, like of course, like I never really compare myself to others, but I like watching other works and I like just grasping the knowledge, looking at their work, and maybe try to understand how do they solve those problems? How do they solve those visual hooks? How do they basically uh, make their work epic or make their work attractive, right? So these are the things that, yeah, in that way you should compare, com compare yourself, but not directly because it's, uh, yeah. it, 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 would be, it, would be very, it would be very tough. And sometimes like, yeah, like, like you prefer artist A, the other prefer artist B. And you cannot influence the other option, opinion about it because maybe someone likes artist B more than artist A. So it's like really, it's like yeah, comparing um, yourself maybe uh, maybe not, but just basically looking at other pictures, other people works, and yeah, comparing your skills or what whatever kind of you are still have to learn. I think it's very 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 healthy. You know that's what I for instance do. Like if I see the guy that that does like for instance amazing like. Uh, uh, 3D modeling and like I just want to I just want to know how to do that as well you know so that's pretty normal. Yeah, but it's more, I think it's more like insp inspiring, not comparing. Yeah, so yeah, like for... y yes, but in some ways you are still comparing that. Oh, my skills are not at the same level, for instance, right? So yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So the second question from Adam is: Professionals often say every piece is a struggle, even after the years of mastery. What part of the process uh, create this design, starting originality, for example, is uh, this what keeps you interested in art? Uh, can you repeat because like your uh, second half of the answer just cut. Um, okay, design is well, so so professional often says every piece is a struggle even after the years of mastery. What part of the process uh, creates this? Design, starting, originality, for example, is this is what keeps you interested in art? Uh, it's a little bit, uh, I don't know, like, I think for me, what, what, what makes me, uh, what makes me happy about the whole process is basically the beginning. So like when I just took those screenshots, I just wanted to read them apart. Like, yeah, I just want to do this, I just want to do that. And that's basically what my brain has like constant, constant explosions of ideas. And that's what basically gives me the most enjoyable part. And it's the same when you design something. It's not about like, how do I render that? How do I make the final refinement to this gun or to this, like, uh, to this tank? It's about like the whole process of like finding the right, uh, finding the right silhouette and where I can just basically, you know, like, um, yeah, try to find like uh, the way that I want to approach with uh, my detail later on. But I think for me, the most painful is either like, uh, drastic changes to something that I think is good or uh, 
or the just rendering part like it's just the most boring you know to, to me uh, I just love uh, the creative process I'm that guy that sometimes is very impatient and I just want to see the results fast that's why I'll do a lot of concepts very fast uh, because I want to see the results and I just want to feed my brain with the pleasant imagery basically and like my 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 designs my ideas are the most fresh when I do them fast when I do them rough you know so uh, for me that the exploration and design process is the most fun uh, the, the, the most like painful usually is like the, the just fine-tuning everything towards like yeah the detail of like promo art or whatever okay is there, there's also uh, people want to see comp uh, uh, the second uh, second drawing before and after can you show how, how uh, it was yes sure before? so uh, yeah and value check definitely more punchy you know like I agree that the colors are more cooler that's basically how I see this place like in, the, in those tones uh, but uh, yeah it's uh, is that I think it's uh, yeah that's about it I guess so you're talking about uh, how you start and we have the question from Pramod Shati. How to get a vision in mind before starting an artwork? Is that even important or as you draw, you figure, figure, figure out? <laughs> mm. So yes, I think it's as more asking how you approach your drawing. So it's- Oh, uh, I, I used to do like a lot of brain, like I would say that like, a, just like a brainless sketches, like scribbles back in the days to find like something that interests me. But I don't do that anymore because it's not time efficient and I just like to have an idea already in my mind. So basically it's one of the, those skills that you also have to learn, like how to inject the idea to your brain basically. So how to find something that, that makes you excited, how to find something that makes you hyped. And I think like um, I always start with the idea first. It can be just a like one word, it can be scribble, it can be uh, some frame from the movie, it can be some extra from the book, extra from the article, whatever. But I like to start with the idea first and then I can dive in and start sketching, designing that on the paper or on the canvas. Uh, if I start with just scribbling and trying to figure out things on the go, it might not work that way. Of course, if I work already towards my idea, if I, if I start doing that idea and if I uh, executing that idea, always the new ideas comes in and that's for instance how you can basically make the picture or your uh, image much richer and like uh, yeah um, that's basically how it evolves how it improves but it doesn't mean that uh, I'm starting just without any idea at all so I really like to have at least um, a note of what I'm gonna do and then yeah things are improving on the go or sometimes I just have already the idea in my mind that I go straight to the final but sometimes I have like um, injected just an idea and like I think yeah that's that's awesome but I want to explore on the go and that's where the things might just grow up and, and, and happen so yeah okay so going with this uh, starting about uh, ideas and personal projects uh, Kemva is asking I want to ask about work on personal project. I have problem with coming up with the ideas for painting. If I have topic from outside, like from client or some painting challenges, it's easier to come up with the ideas and sketches. But when I'm starting a blank canvas and trying to paint something for portfolio, I can't find anything that I would like to paint on forcing myself to paint anyway. Uh, myself to paint anyway ends up only with frustration. Any idea how to get around it? Um, I think again it's all about inspiration and what it's all about what makes you inspired or motivated or driven I would say um, because every everything works uh, you know everyone can have their own approach or, or their own like a uh, uh, period of time that they, they like this or that topic you know so I would say like it's uh, yeah, get inspired first and then do the job, not, not the other way. Because the commercial work always gives you the briefs. But if you want to do something for yourself, 
try to find uh, something that in interests you or try to get inspired first and then approach it, you know? Yeah, so, so f first, first your passion go and inspiration and then you can work more, yeah? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think this is similar questions. Uh, how can beginners? Uh, yeah. How can beginners make up uh, for the missing experience the professional array gain over time? Yeah, this is one question, and I think the second similar is uh, that is practice can only make improvement, or we need to a lot of experience too. Yeah. Uh, of course, experience comes with time. It's like not that everyone that just that is good an art that's that's a, that's a good artist get like experience from the go. Uh, I would say experience comes with uh, yeah with how much uh, a project you tackled or how much stuff you've done um, and that's how yeah like experience grows and uh, yeah how you grow uh, in terms of not only art but also your uh, your art career because it's also a business uh, in the end of the day so uh, yeah I think it's it's just comes with time and you have to be patient. Like uh, the patience is the thing, you know, like even when I said like I'm impatient to see the results, it doesn't mean that uh, I didn't patiently build the career for more than 10 years, you know, so <laughs> it has to require some sort of patience anyway. Okay, so maybe something about time because we are, we left some questions, but yeah, but it's, as our time is also <laughs> short, so yes. I think the, yeah. The good question to summarize will be, uh, do you have any tips about managing your time properly? I find it hard to manage university work, other tasks, job and learning concept art. I'm scared that soon when I finish uh, university and I will have to go to work every day, maybe have a family, I will just never find time for concept art and I will never get the industry standards. Ha, that's a very good question because uh, it, it 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 has to uh, it has to be your choice like whatever you want to do and I know it's kind of hard to uh, to do everything uh, in your in your in your in your power uh, to if you want to get into the industry and at the same time if you have to secure yourself or your family uh, you know uh, money wise so I would say. Uh, yeah like if you have a different job like try to uh, draw after hours try to draw like uh, on the breaks try to basically um, develop your skills or your art skills whenever you have time uh, it's the best I, I could actually advise you uh, because of course we always have duties and life is very unexpected thing and sometimes it might be like some new things coming in that you might you might have not really counted into consideration, but uh, that they happen anyway. And um, yeah, I know some artists that were like 35, 40, that they just swapped their industries or they just changed their industries and they, they became like a great artist. So I think it's, uh, it's a matter of how much really you are um, ready to sacrifice and how much you really want to do that, basically. Yeah, I think so. One question. One is about. I think the one one last question. It's also I see that starting to showing a lot. Mm -hmm. I would love. I would love to know more about the economic side of an art career. Rate rating yourself properly, passive incomes for artists, etc. Do you have some input in this? Uh, yes, I also did uh, some small talk on that for Wacom, I think a year ago. Uh, so if maybe I can just send a link to that. Okay, that would uh, be great. I think it... Because it, 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 covers, it covers a lot of things uh, like, uh, like the rates in our industry and how to basically grow uh, your art career as a brand. Uh, not, not every artist wants to go that path, but uh, it's just about uh, self-experience that, uh, you know, and, and how to, uh, how the things were progressing uh, along the ways and across the years, basically. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna post the link to the Discord. 
uh, because this is such yeah. a huge topic and I still want to uh, I still want to somehow uh, do this some something like that maybe we can do a, a totally uh, separate topic on that or we can do uh, maybe some business uh, side of things class at focal point like I would really, really like to do this sort of stuff because I think it's very important and it's very uh, it's a topic that's very much uh, still shallow in 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 the general um, in the general common sense, and a lot of people are not talking about it. But it's very important to talk about it, so uh, we as a, we as an artist can basically uh, value ourselves properly, right? So definitely have a look into that. Uh, maybe Wojtek, after uh, our uh, stream, you can also uh, hang this uh, link somewhere to to the channel. Uh, so people can uh, yeah, look it up. I yeah, I will look where, where the best to put them. Awesome. Uh, so uh, and yeah, because this is such a big uh, question, and I would love to talk about it and go on on and on. But I think you can find a lot of information already in that talk. So yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, there's some questions about techniques but i think it's uh, a lot of about fundamentals we can learn during the school so now i think it's hard to say yeah everything uh, everything about how we, to learn fundamentals and all the stuff we because... can only we can only um say that uh yeah i enjoy doing this i hope you guys enjoyed it as well and we definitely want to do more of those streams we want to really uh make this like a nice focal point uh, community space in the in the in the internet for those that are either interested at school or are our students or were our students or will be our students so everyone that's like art friendly and like is basically crazy about art is super uh, super welcome to join us so yeah please feel free to share it and know uh, get to know your uh, your friends that uh, such channel exists and yeah, and I think yeah, uh, and I think it's, you don't, shouldn't be upset if we don't answer your question because there will be a lot, plenty of uh, option to answer them, and yeah, and this is not not the last thing. Yeah, <laughs> we will make manage more. Definitely this not. time. We are not done. Podcast or, or questions, answering the questions. Yeah, so yeah, I think we have some ideas how to improve uh, yeah, Discord and yeah. So this is just the beginning of, of this uh, channel and our adventures, so yeah. So I think. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, joining guys. Uh, hopefully we somehow managed to uh, get through that technical aspect of the streams. We definitely want to uh, and improve on that uh, and please also if you have any ideas for us how can we still be able to stream things uh, via discord just let us know if that option as we did today worked well i think i'm happy to do it uh, one more time in that format right so yeah i think if you have any question write to me for the focal point school stuff uh, on the private message or oh yeah so so not making a lot of you know uh, mess in the channels awesome fantastic uh, yeah yeah uh, thank you yeah, very much so thank you Derek. thank you Derek, for your presentation and <laughs> yeah and how how it was great to see how you approach the the topic that we give our uh, people on the contest in our contest and see how how, how you fight with this uh, monster, demons okay, demons yeah now get back to yeah. work right now get back to work guys uh yeah thanks for having me more. yeah <laughs> yeah see you around man see you guys also um, yes, thank uh, you next time bye bye